What's up, y'all? This is 1000. I am an artist. Today, we're gonna be doing a Photoshop tutorial. We're gonna color a drawing in Photoshop, make it look all nice and colorful. It's gonna be super fun, it's gonna be super rad, and it's probably gonna be kinda chill and easy, hopefully, if I explain things right. Um, let's see, what do you need for today? You need a computer, yeah. You need Photoshop. Hopefully you have that if you clicked on a Photoshop tutorial. And you're probably gonna need a graphics tablet. That's the little thing where you take the pen and you can draw on this tablet and it magically appears like it's like a mouse, but you can draw with it. I have two different kinds of graphics tablets. This is my Wacom Intuos 3. I use it for my travel rig. It's the kind where you draw here and you have to keep your eyes on the screen and you sort of have to disassociate your hand from this, the screen, I guess. I've been using this for a long time. This is the first graphics tablet I ever had. It's a super old model compared to what's out right now. If you want, I'll leave a link to the newest version of this down in the description. It's cool, this is part of my travel rig. This goes in my backpack and I take it cause I'm always gotta put in work, 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 work. Uh, gotta put in work. <laughs> that was dumb. Wacom makes some good shizzle. Like they're kind of the big name in the graphics tablet game. So I'm not gonna be using that one today cause I got this thang thang right here. This is a graphics display. And this is where you can draw right on the screen. It's an XP Pen Artist 16 Pro, I think. This one's cool. It's like way cheaper than the Wacom version. I don't know. I've been using this thing for about a year now and I like it a lot. Yeah, link to that in the description as well. If you guys click any of the links in the description and buy it, it's like an affiliate link or whatever and it supports my channel a little bit. Either way, it's up to you. I don't know. I've never had anybody do it before, but <laughs> you guys ready to do this? Let's color our drawing in Photoshop. Blow. All right, y'all, welcome to the Photoshop tutorial. We're gonna color a drawing, it's gonna be rad. Let's go ahead and launch Photoshop. Photoshop CC. I'm gonna go ahead and open my drawing here. I drew this with ink on a piece of paper, photographed it, and then I used uh, the levels to kind of make it pure black and pure white. I'm gonna go ahead and separate my line art from my background here. I made an entire video about how to do this. So I'm gonna speed through this, but there is a link to the video right somewhere on the screen right now, hopefully. Let's go ahead, Command A, Command X, Q, Command V, Q again, Shift Command I, Shift F5, fill with black. I went through that real slow on my other video, so we're just gonna breeze through that. We have our line art separated from our background now. Um, let's go ahead and drop in a new background. Grab some white up here, and then just click on a new layer, and now we have the background on this layer and the line art on this layer. All right, so the first thing we wanna do when we're coloring our drawing is we're gonna to wanna to click on the inks layer here. Actually, let's name this so that it's just easy for everybody. We'll call this inks double click the name here we'll call this background awesome all right so let's go ahead and click on the inks layer click and we want to fill this character in with one solid color to start so i'm going to grab my magic wand tool that's w on your keyboard if you're interested and I'm gonna click on the outside of my character here. And you wanna make sure that contiguous is checked or else it'll select, here, I'll show you. If, you, if co contiguous is not checked, it'll select like every bit of the lines, but we just want the area outside of the character. Let's check contiguous. Click on the outside of the character. And now we have these marching ants all the way around this dude. But this area is sealed off in between his arm and his body. So let's hold down shift, click that, add that to our selection. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. And we gotta get this area, zoom in a little bit more. Get this area, I know. Attention to detail, gotta have it, gotta do it. All right, and probably in his shoelaces, we're gonna need to get that, but we'll do that later. Now, we wanna invert this selection. 
Shift Command I on a Mac, Shift Control I on a PC. I'm gonna use Mac uh, Quick Key Vernacular because I use a Mac. I think you switch Command to Windows Key. You switch. I don't know Windows. I don't use it. You guys are gonna have to figure that out on your own. And then, so we got the outside of the character selected. We want to go to Select, choose Modify, and choose Contract. Because we have this area selected all the way around this dude, and we just want to shrink it in a little bit so our fill color doesn't go past our lines at all. So we're just going to shrink it in by like two pixels. It's super chill. It was on the very outside of it. And now it's just inside. So we want to create a new layer. Click. We want to drag that layer below the inks. Awesome. And then we want to name this layer flats. F-L-A-T-S. Boom diddy. All right. So on our flats layer, we can choose any random color. I'm just going to choose, I don't know, this pink color. And we're going to choose our bucket tool, which is right over here. You can hit G on your keyboard to bring that up. And we're going to go ahead and click. And now our whole character has been filled in with one solid color. Sweet. That's a great start. Um, we'll hit Command D to deselect. And now we're going to go ahead and just start filling in big chunks of color. Um, we want to go to our lasso tool right here. You can hit L on your keyboard and I'm just going to fill in like his whole face area. We're just going to click points with our mouse around his whole face. Click, click, click. And you're just making points all the way along the outside of this area. Zoom in a bit so we can get even more precision. Yep, cool. All the way around, it's basically just like make a point, make a point, make a point, move your mouse. Oh, and also if you hit spacebar on your keyboard, your lasso tool, or any tool, turns into the grabber hand. So I can hit spacebar and drag, and drag my drawing to where I need it to be. Cool. Point. Point, point. And then when you get to the other end, you can either double click your mouse to close off the selection or you can hit enter on your keyboard. And that closes off the selection. And we're just going to choose uh, a color here. The color that you choose is not super important because you can always change this later. Cool. Make that blue. Awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and fill in his hair. Now check this out. This area is pink and this area is blue. The hair area that we're going to color is also blue. So all we really need to worry about with our lasso tool here is the area that's blue. We're going to hold that line where it's blue. But when we get to the pink area, we can go anywhere we want. And when we grab a new color to make his hair, we click in the blue area. It's not going to affect the pink. So as you're tracing, that's why we did the big fill color as our very first step, because now those colors act as a barrier where you don't really have to trace that much. So we're just going to keep doing this process over and over again. This is called flatting, and this is what the, the way that you um, start it so that you can get into the shading and the rendering. At least that's how I do it. Yep, just going to keep this, this process going. It's, I mean, it's not a super fast process but it makes some really cool finished results. Just continuing to do this. All right, so do it, do it, do it, do it. All right, making these points almost there. Can't wait. Oh, we're going to get to the other side. Cool. Doesn't matter about the pink. We're just, we just want to do the blue. So go ahead and hit G. Bam. F the G pulls up the paint bucket tool. We went and filled that color in. Command D to deselect. Just a little bit more of this hair over here. And yep, yep. Doesn't matter about the pink area. Hit G on the keyboard to pull up your paint bucket. Click that area and that is some hair. All right, so check this out. Another way that you can speed this process up a little bit instead of clicking point, 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 point is if you use the magic wand tool. You can go to the inks layer here, 
pull, hit W on your keyboard to get your magic wand. And let's say we want to fill in his glasses here. It's like an open area without any obstructions that's completely closed off. So we're just going to click inside the glasses. And we've got a selection made of this area inside the glasses. Now, these glasses have some depth to them. So let's go ahead and grab here, here. I'm holding down shift on my keyboard to add to my selection. Here, 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 this area, this area, this area, there, 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 and there. All right, so now here's the important part. Go back to your flats layer. Got it. Go to select, modify, and now we want to choose expand because we've selected inside the black line area. We want to expand our selection by two pixels just so that again, it's inside the line instead of right up against the line. Done. All right, so let's make these glasses, um, I don't know, like orange yellow for now. And then we're gonna we're on our flats layer, so don't forget to do that. If you're on your inks layer, you're gonna make this color fill on your inks layer. I do that all the time. It's a bummer. And then we hit G on our keyboard to pull up our paint bucket and click. And now, see this pink? It stopped because we were in the blue area. And it, when it goes from color to color, it stops. So we'll go ahead and click on the pink area. Sweetness. We just did those glasses really quick. This little area needs. So I'm going to pull up my lasso tool and just select that, double click to close. That's the little inside of his, of his glasses band there. All right, so sometimes you need to use that magic wand tool and sometimes you need to use the lasso tool because of how complex the shape is. But those glasses are just like a big sort of shape without any obstruction so we can use that magic wand technique. Getting in here for his eye. Sweet lasso tool. Select, 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 select. Cool. Awesome. Now, if we hide our inks, I mean, we can see that it's starting to look like that. And this is called flatting. It's just giving each section of the drawing sort of like its own color. Uh, get in here for this tongue. Lasso tool, polygon lasso tool. Give him a pink tongue. And let's go ahead and give him just some random color headphones. Maybe some like some like lime green headphones. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do this part. I just noticed. Wait, I'll do that after the headphones. Don't let me forget, guys. Gotta do. That's so all you're doing is just making selections and filling that selection color in. When you go outside the character, it doesn't matter because it stops with the color. Cool. So you guys are kind of getting this, right? Is it is it making sense? So I think I'm going to just fast motion this part because it's literally the same process over and over and over again. And we'll just jump next to the to the rendering part if that's cool with you guys. So now let's get into the, the rendering, the shading, the painting, whatever you want to call it. First thing we're going to want to do probably is we're going to need to create an action. An action in Photoshop is sort of like a pre-recorded series of events. And there's a certain thing that we're going to have to do over and over again. And if we create an action for it, it's going to make things go a lot quicker. So let's grab our magic wand tool. This is our actions panel, by the way, if you click this little play button here. Um, we're going to grab our magic wand tool and just sort of select a section. We got the blue section here doesn't really matter what you select. Uh, we're going to go to our actions here and we're going to do new action. I'll call this tutorial. Boom. Uh, set it to default actions. That's fine. Assign it to a function key. We'll set it to like F4. Um, color. 
none. And then we're just going to go ahead and hit record. Because what we want to do here is we want to copy our selection, create a new layer, paste that selection to that new layer, and then turn on lock transparency. So we'll hit record. Hit. Now everything that we're doing now is being recorded. So we're going to hit command C. That See, their copy just appeared. Then we're going to choose create new layer. There's our new layer, and there is new layers in there. We're going to hit Command V to paste it. And then the last step is to click this little checker box down here that lock transparency pixels or whatever it's called. And then we're going to hit stop. And now when we hit F4 on our keyboard, all of those functions are gonna, gonna take place. Um, and what that does is it takes whatever color you wanna work on at the moment and it promotes it to a new layer. And then this uh, lock transparent pixels makes it so that when we paint in an area, it's only gonna be like that, that blue face we just selected, it's only gonna paint on the blue it's not going to paint on the area around it. So if we want to do shading or if we want to do highlights, it's only going to do the shading and the highlights on the face. We don't have to worry about going outside of our lines. Pretty awesome. A quick note, guys, I just assigned that to F4 for the tutorial, but normally I have that function assigned to F5. So for the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to be using F5 on my keyboard for my quick key. Just didn't want there to be any confusion. All right, back to the tutorial. All right, so we have our face on, on a new layer here and also probably the kneecaps because the kneecaps are the same color. We're gonna go ahead and grab our brush tool. We'll hit B on the keyboard. The brush tool is right here. And right now, uh, the brush tool is really small and really solid. We don't want that. So we want to go up to our brush settings here. I'm just using a hard round brush. We wanna take our hardness all the way down and bump our size up. Hit enter. And our size is still too small, but that's okay. We're gonna go to opacity, and we're gonna change this from 100% down to like 20%. And the opacity is how transparent or not transparent your your piece your your uh, how it lays the paint on the paper. So uh, we're gonna hit the brackets, closed bracket to make it larger, and open bracket to make it smaller. So about there is good. And we're going to hit I on our keyboard to choose our ink dropper tool, and we're going to select the color that we use for the skin. Now, over in our color panel here, we're going to drop it down to sort of a darker version of that color. And the light in our image is coming from here. You can tell by my shading that the light is coming from, like, top left, and the shadows are going to be uh, cast uh, bottom right. We have our brush settings set, and now I'm just going to shade the half of the face that is going to be in shadow. I like to do this as my first step, so I've got some different values going here. I've got light on his left side, dark on his right side, and then I'm going to grab my lasso tool. And instead of using the polygon lasso tool, I'm going to use the freehand lasso tool, or just regular lasso tool. I like to zoom in here, and I'm going to select the shadowy area so his glasses are going to cast down so i'm just clicking and dragging my shadow area uh, under his eyes he's got some wrinkles going there and i'm holding down shift to add to my selection shift and then click and drag or click and draw since i'm using my graphics tablet and I'm getting all this shadowy area under his glasses, under his mouth, more under his glasses, under his glasses here. And then I like to do the hair would be casting some shadow down onto his forehead, shift. Hold down shift to keep adding to your selection. Close that off. Um, his hood. Yeah, all right. So we've got those areas selected. Now we're gonna go back to our brush tool. I'm gonna get a little bit more of like maybe a bluer, slightly bluer tone. 
And then we're just going to do basically a wash over this whole face because that's where we had those areas selected. Maybe a touch more on this side than on the, on the left side. Command D to deselect. Cool. And now we can kind of uh, pop in there with a little bit of highlights. So the bridge of his nose. And on my highlights, I like to be a little bit, um, use a much smaller brush. Making my brush size smaller. We'll get in there. With some, a light version of that color. Hit some highlights here. Sometimes on the actual skin areas, I don't even make a selection. I just kind of lighten it up in a certain area. Maybe the reflection on his eyes. And on the highlights, I like to make a selection bigger and then just kind of touch the edges a little bit. Instead of completely going over the selection, cool, we got some highlights going there. And then inside of his, uh, his mouth would be much darker. Yeah. So that's kind of the process of that. And then sometimes I like to jump in and do some big washes where maybe the right half of his face is kind of in a, a purple light and the, the left half is going to be in a more warm light. So he's got that going on and then grab more of like a, a yellowish tone. And try and give him a bit more warmth on this side of his face. And you can really play, play around with different colors you got going on. Could even throw a little red in there. It's really up to you how you want to color it. So then let's mess around with the hair a little bit. We'll go back to our flats layer. Hit W on our magic wand, click on the hair, got that selected, hit, I'm going to hit F5 because that's what I have it assigned to, and that does that, does that action, and we're going to get in here and darken up this side, lighten up this side, so we'll grab like a dark blue, hit B on our brush. And then grab more of like a, a lighter color here. And then I'm going to grab my lasso tool and jump in here and do the shadows. So I like to do the, the overall values from where my light source is first. Then I like to come in and do the, um, the more specific selected shadows. And then I like to do the highlights. And then I like to do the color adjustment washes. OK. We'll grab like a dark blue. Did that too many times. I did too many passes over that. So Command Z, Command Z. Cool. A little bit more chill. And then do some highlights on here.
grab like a light teal. Switch to our brush tool. And then just hit it with some highlights. And then while I still have that selected, um, I might just do a real kind of light dusting of yellow. Drop my opacity down to 10%. Yeah, so now he's got some kind of some hair going there. Um, and let's do his uh, his hoodie. So I'm going to grab all the orange. And I want to shade the light sort of creamy orange at the same time because it's all part of the same garment. Um, so I hold down shift and selected that light area too. Going to hit F5 to promote that to a new layer. So now we can see um, like just the face and the hair are on those layers, the hoodie's on this layer, and there's all the rest of our flats. So for the hoodie, let's go ahead and give him his sort of shadowy side. Um, I'll do sort of a maroon. Increase my opacity back up to 15% uh, 20% and then I'm gonna give him kind of a more yellow side where the sunshine is hitting him Cool. So now uh, I'm going to get in there and do my shadow. So this whole like section of him is in shadow. Grab this section here. And then under his his hood, definitely got some wrinkles going here. I'm kind of racing through this a little bit to try and keep this video short, but you want to take your time. And um, my lines are my lines and my shadows are not like if I was doing this for a client, this would not look like this but I don't know if you guys want to sit through like a three hour video cool we'll go with that and let's grab sort of our maroon color we had going before and we're just doing another wash Cool. So we got some kind of shadows going there. And then can hit some highlights. Yeah, this style of rendering, I really like it for my really graphic, like line art illustrations. It's sort of, you know, it's sort of like a comic book style rendering. And comic books were like the first big, huge inspiration for me. It was like my gateway into the art world. When I saw some of the illustrations in X Men and some of the other comic books that I was into as a teenager, it was like, oh my God, this whole world of amazing art is out there. So, you know, my style is definitely like there's a healthy dose of comic book influence in there. There's anime in there. There's cartoons. It's just like all my favorite nerdy stuff smashed together and then, you know, out comes my style. You can take the, what I'm showing you here and use it as your starting point and then develop some of your own style and your own techniques. And yeah, it works for me. I like it and it just helps me maintain that really bold, rich, saturated color that I, you know, that I'm known for a little bit and that my traditional art has and yeah that hoodie is looking pretty good so yeah that's that's the process right there guys um, I'm just gonna kind of speed it up again here just to keep it a little bit shorter 
and just gonna finish kind of rendering this out do a real quick and dirty for this one for the tutorial but you can you can take your time and make it so perfect Thanks so much if you're still watching. I know this video is long, but I'm trying to make it as short as possible. But this is not a really a short process. This is kind of a long process. Thanks, y'all. I hope you're learning something. If you have any questions on what we've done so far, uh, leave it down in the comments. And I will do my very best to try and answer. All right. That's good enough for this example. Um, yeah, he's kind of shaded in now. And one of the last steps that I like to do is I'm going to select all my layers. Click the bottom one, hold shift, click the top one, hold down option on my keyboard and drag down. That duplicates everything. Right click on the top layer and then do merge layers. That leaves us with a copy of all of our layers but then makes one copy of everything put together. And then I'm going to go ahead and open some watercolor textures that I have. Watercolor textures going to open this one and I'm going to open this one cool let's get these open my computer is being real slow right now because of this screen capture that I'm doing to make this tutorial it's usually not this laggy sorry guys okay so we'll grab this one Apple A to select all command C to copy it go back to our drawing and then paste, we'll paste it right underneath the inks layer. Command V, Command T to transform this. And we're gonna make it sort of the size of our painting. I'm gonna make it vertical instead of a horizontal. Oh, I put that white on that, uh, on the shoes. On the ink, I put the white on the shoes on the inks layer. Remember how I told you guys not to do that? That's why it's still sitting on top of there. So now I'm going to go back down to my, this copy of all the layers that I have together. Hit W on, for my magic wand and select everywhere on the outside of it. Go back up to this watercolor layer. Delete everywhere outside of it. And then I'm going to do this um, layer mode to be hard light. And then I'm going to turn my opacity down. And this is just going to add sort of a watercolor effect to the piece. Cool. And then I'll grab the other one. Command A. Command C. Command V, Command T to transform it. Make it about the size of my guy. Hit enter, select, delete, hard light. And then turn the opacity down. And now he's got kind of watercolor painting vibe, which is a cool effect. Kind of smooths everything out too. And uh, let me fix these, these bits of white that I accidentally did on the inks layer. Grab that. I'm going to hit F5 to promote it to a new layer. Go back here. Grab it again. Hit delete to get it out of there. And then just drag that new layer down below my watercolor textures. Cool. And there's some stuff on the outside of, those are all that, that watercolor that I stretched out. So I'm going to go ahead and crop this. And yeah, now I'll just uh, drop my signature on here. <laughs> Got to remember that step. I learned a lot of these tips from watching a lot of different YouTube tutorials and blog tutorials and just like my whole Photoshop experience is, is encountering a problem and then going online to figure out how to fix it. And, you know, when you encounter enough problems and fix enough problems, you kind of develop an understanding of the program. And at first it's like super foreign, but then it becomes something that becomes second nature and it becomes a really powerful tool in your tool belt. I started as a traditional 
artist and I still am a traditional artist. I do paintings, I do murals, I do all kinds of stuff, but having that digital side really can kind of add another tool to the tool belt and it just means that maybe you can get some more gigs that aren't just traditional art. Get it just right. Let the people know who you are with the signature. And that's it. That is the finished colored drawing. That's how you do it. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you guys. Thank you for watching. I know it was a long one, but this is not a fast process. And there's a, kind of a lot of things to talk about. Um, I had some people asking me to show them how to do this. So here you go. It's pretty fun. It's got a lot of different things that you can do. You can play around with colors a whole lot. And I really appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed this, subscribe to my channel. I got all kinds of different art videos on here. Murals and paintings and tutorials. And it's just, it's a blast around here. Stick around. Say what's up. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Thanks y'all so much. Appreciate you.